All right, we're back. Okay. Uh, this is the second of two problems I'm doing for hypothesis testing. If you have any questions or want me to do any other problems in the video, let me know and I'll do what I can. Um, here's the question. 928. A shareholders group launching a protest claimed that the mean tenure for a chief executive was at least nine years. Oops. A survey of companies reported in the Wall Street Journal found a sample mean tenure of X bar equals 7.27 years for CEOs with a standard deviation of S equals 6.38. That's a red flag to you right there. Um, so that's a sample standard deviation that they're giving us. Uh, a, part A is asking us to formulate hypotheses that can be used to challenge the validity of the claim made by the shareholders group. Okay, we want to challenge the validity of the claim. What we're going to do is we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt, right? Because we want to prove it wrong if we can. And the only thing you can prove is the alternative. What that means is that their claim is going to go in the null. The shareholders group claims that the mean tenure is at least nine years. Ux is greater than or equal to nine, where x is tenure in years, and then mu x is the mean, is the population mean tenure, is for a CEO. Okay, so our null is that their claim is true, and if we can prove it false, then it will be false, right? Then we can, or then we know that it's false, and we can claim the alternative is true. So our alternative is going to be the other part, mu x is less than 9, and that's part A, done, formulating the hypotheses. Um, the keys here are, we're going to challenge the validity of the claim, uh, they're claiming that it was at least 9 years, That's what we're, and they're talking about the mean tenure, so that's the stuff we use to do that. That's part A, that's also step 1. <coughs> they often give us step 2, which is the, the uh, level of significance in the the last part, it's not 0 0.05, it's 0 0.01. Um, but that's the part that I like to do next, so I look for that and find it. Okay. Step two is to choose this. Step three is to choose a test statistic. We'll get there. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. So what else do we know? I'm just going to collect some information for now. We have an X bar, 7.27. We have a sample standard deviation. S, that's an S, S is equal to 6.38. And part B is asking us to assume that 85 companies were included in the sample. So we have an N, which is 85. Uh, we also have a mu zero, right? That's in the question, or that's in the hypotheses, nine, it's right there. So we have a bunch of stuff. The stuff we have is stuff that you should see in a test statistic that looks like this. T equals X bar minus mu zero over S divided by the square root of n. And that is the test statistic we're going to use. But before I uh, before I just jump right ahead and roll with it and explain why. Um, because if you recall, what we have now is we have uh, we have a hypo hypothesis, a hypothetical population mean, right? A population mean under the null, meaning that that's the one we're going to assume is true. Which means we're assuming that this is what the sampling distribution looks like. It's got a mean of 9. Because that's and this is x bar, right? This is where we this is the lottery from which we draw sample means, and it's got a standard deviation sigma x bar equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. We don't know what this is in this case, right? They're just giving us the sample standard deviation, which means that our best guess is going to be a little bit off. So instead of relating it to the standard normal, what we have to do is we can relate it to the t distribution, right? Because we're, we're going to estimate this like so. I assume we're going to estimate it as s over the square root of n. But when we do that, we're wrong a little bit. So we use the t distribution to uh, to relate it. The t distribution looks like this. It's a little bit fatter in the tails, right? It's kind of a t distribution. Um, and it's indexed by degrees of freedom. If you recall, then we calculate the degrees of freedom as n minus 1. So in this case, we have 84 degrees of freedom. So, put that right here, df equals 84, and this is our curve. Okay, now we drew a sample, right? We did draw a sample, and our sample gave us a mean tenure of 7.27. That's our x-bar, right? So we got one over here at 7.27. And we want to know is how unlikely is this? What's this area over here, essentially? Um, and in order to try to find that out, we relate it to our t-distribution, 
and we have to figure out what t this is. Um, and then we can figure out what the area is over here. Right. And that's essentially what we're doing. Now to relate this, we use something that's kind of akin to the score function. Right? It looks like this, which looks a lot like the score function. Instead of sigma, we have an estimate of sigma right there. Uh, we have s. Okay, so that's our test statistic. That'll tell us what our value of t is for our sample mean. The sample mean we actually selected has a t score, uh, and this is how we get it. So this is step three done. We chose this. We chose this because sigma x was unknown. And now step four, if we have all the stuff we need, we can plug it in. If we don't, we can find it. Um, so we have an x bar, we do. We have a mu zero, we do. We have an s, yes, we have an n. So we can just plug this stuff in. T is going to be equal to 7.27. Hold on, my pen is being painful. There we go. 7.27 minus 9 over 6.38 divided by the square root of 85. That's not a perfect square. Okay. So let me move this over a little bit. So maybe this way. So I can get my Excel up, do my calculations. There we go. Okay, so we have equals 7.27 minus 9. That's the numerator. Equals 6.38 divided by the square root of 85. 0.69208. Now we're going to take the top one, divide by the bottom one. And we get negative 2.4999997. Negative 2.5. Five. We'll just call it negative 2.5. Move this back over. And that's our value of t right here, negative 2.5. Okay, now we want to know what the value, what the area over here is. Now with t distributions, um, we can't usually uh, actually pinpoint it with a table. So we can pull up our t table. I will pull up our t table. Um, but we're not going to be able to find it exactly. So first of all, we need to know which curve we're talking about. We're talking about 84 degrees of freedom, right? That's right here. So on 84 degrees of freedom, we're looking at this curve right here. So what we do is we go across and we see where it switches. Um, and we're looking for just this area in the tail, but the table only tells us stuff about the positive side because it's symmetric. So we're actually gonna look up for positive 2.5 what this area is, we're gonna bound it, um, because it will be the same as the, the area over in this tail. So we will bound it, bound our p-value, which means that instead of giving an exact p-value, we're going to give two values that our p-value falls between, usually, if we can. So we know that our p-value is going to be greater than something, we know that our p-value is going to be less than something. So we go across until we see where it flips over 2.5. Um, it turns out that if we were at 2.372, Meaning if we had gotten a t of 2.372, uh, that's a negative 2.372 is over here, then we would have um, 0.01 in the tail, 0.01 in the tail. Right, this area, this green area is 0.01. If, on the other hand, we were at um, 2.636, we would have 0 0.005 in the tail. So I'll use a different color, stripes maybe. That was 2.636. And this area over here in purple would be 0 0.005. What that means is that the shape of our maroon area, which is what we were originally interested in, right? this area here is in between those two values. right? It's bigger than the purple area. So p-value is greater than 0 0.005, uh, which I can do in purple maybe if we want. It's greater than 0 0.005, and it's less than the, than the green area, which is 0 0.01. It's somewhere in between. And because we just have, we don't have that much information on each curve, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six data points for each curve, we can just bound it like that. That's good enough. Okay, that will help us, that will get us the answer to our problem, right? Because they want to know, um, well, they want to know what the p-value is, and we can say, well, it's in between here. 
And then part C gives us an alpha of 0 0.01 and asks what our conclusion is. Well, the way we can do that is say, well, this right here, this is alpha, and we know that our p-value is less than that. So that means because our p-value is less, we reject. Why? Well, because the chance that, we, that the null is true and we would get a t like we did is less than 1%. When we bounded this, that's what we that's what we did. We said, well, it's greater than one in uh, what is that? One in two hundred, but it's less than one in one hundred, and so we said it's very improbable that we would get a, a mean of seven point two seven if nine were the true value. Right? There's just not. It's not likely that. It's very unlikely that that would happen. It's sufficiently unlikely that uh, we would want to reject the null. Okay, we can find an exact p-value with uh, with Excel. Um, it's been a little. I often have to kind of screw around with it to get the right answer here, so bear with me. So this was our true test statistic, right? Negative two point four nine nine seven. We can find out what the tail is for that. So we have t distribution. This is our value of x. Um, our degrees of freedom was eighty four, and we're looking at one tail. Okay, I think this only takes positive numbers. Uh, so there you go. <coughs> That, that's how you can do this. It's t distribution, and then you throw in a positive number, in this case, positive 2.49997. Um, you tell it how many degrees of freedom and which t how many tails you want included. And that tells us that in the upper tail there, uh, in the one tail test, the p value is going to be 0 0.007. That's the actual area. And sure enough, you look back at our bounds, you can see that 0.007 is greater than 0 0.005 and less than 0 0.01. So that's the true p value. You can use Excel to find it. On practice, on exams, I mean, if you have Excel, that's great. You should take advantage and, and use it. Um, if not, you can look at a t-table, and that will get you the answer just fine. Um, but that's how you solve a hypothesis testing problem for one population mean when you don't know the population standard deviation. Not that different from the other case. You should have a little bit different test statistic using a little bit different table. Okay, thank you, guys. Um, those are some hypothesis testing practice problem video solutions. Uh, if you have any questions... Uh, hit me on Blackboard or email me or post something on the uh, on the video board. Um, and if there are any other practice problems you'd like to see me do, let me know and I'll do what I can to help. Thanks. Bye.